Hi everyone, I'm Paul and I'm the CTO at SkySiv. Uh, today I'll be discussing uh, plate elements and shell elements and how to interpret and understand the results of these elements. Um, so I did a previous video on uh, an overview of these elements, so I'd highly recommend checking out that video before watching this video. Okay, so the first aspect of plates that you need to understand um, to be able to interpret the results is how the local axes work. So I've drawn a plate here. This is node one, node two, node three, and node four of the plate. So the local x-axis and the local y-axis are in the plane of the plate. And the x-axis is dictated by uh, the direction from node one to node two. So x and y are in the plane of the plate and the normal axis of the plate is always the z-axis. Yeah, so this discussion might get fairly technical, but I'll do my best to make it as simple as possible. So one of the easiest results to understand is the plate displacement. So here I've drawn just a simple plate in a 2D XY plane, but really the results will be in a 3D XYZ plane. But for the purpose of illustration, I've simplified it a little bit. So here we've got uh, the original plate position, and then this one is the plate deformed position, so after the load has been applied. So the plate displacement is the position of the plate after the load has been applied, measured along the global axes. So this point of the plate has moved to here. So the global X displacement is there and the global Y displacement is there. So that's the plate displacement results. Now we can start talking about the, the forces on the plate. So I've drawn a plate element with some thickness and um, I've drawn again the local axis, so X, Y, and Z, as we explained before. And these are the in-plane membrane forces of the plate. So we've got FX, which is, as you can see, along the X axis uh, of the plate, and that is perpendicular to uh, the side of the plate here and here. And then similarly, we've got uh, FY, which is along the Y axis, again, perpendicular um, to the side of the plate. And then we've got the in-plane shear force, uh, FXY, and that is along the side of the plate. So it's along uh, all four sides of the plate, and it's the same value for all four sides. Um, now the other thing to mention is the units. So uh, all of the in-plane forces are force per unit length. Uh, so if I wanted to get uh, the total force on the element, I would multiply the force um, by the length of uh, this side that is perpendicular to the direction of the force. Uh, so for example, if I wanted the total force of Fx, I would multiply Fx by the length of this side. Uh, now the other important thing to mention is that these are the forces on the actual element of the plane. Uh, so if you're looking at the nodal forces of the plane, what, what would happen is you would get these forces on the element and then they would get extrapolated out to the nodes. So the software would do this automatically for you, but usually in the software it would have a result to toggle between the plate element results and the plate nodal results, which are extrapolated out to the nodes. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the out of plane uh, shear forces. So we've got two out of plane shear forces, FXZ and FYZ. So FXZ is the out of plane shear force in the XZ plane and FYZ is the out-of-plane shear force in the YZ plane. Uh, so if I wanted to get uh, the total force of FYZ, I would multiply uh, the FYZ force by the length of the, the side of the face that it's acting on. So again, the, the units will be force per unit length, but if I wanted to get the total force, I multiplied the force by the length uh, of the face that it acts on. Okay, so now we can talk about uh, the moments on the plate. So we've got three moments that are acting on, on the plate. So we've got MX, MY, and MXY. Uh, so MX is the moment about the x-axis of the plate. So that's like that. So if my plate's uh, like that, it would be the moment that way. Uh, MY is the moment about the y-axis of the plate. So that would be like that. And then MXY, is a, a twisting moment about the XY plane. So it's a bit difficult to demonstrate that with the book, um, but it would be something like that. Um, yeah, and, and again, the, the forces are 
uh, so the moment is divided by the length. So we have moment uh, per unit length, which is really the moment is force by length. So it's force by length divided by the length. So if I wanted to get the total uh, moment mx, I would multiply mx by uh, the side of the plate that's perpendicular to the axis that it's rotating about. Um, so mx would be multiplied by that length uh, to get the total mx force on the element and my would be multiplied by that length to get the total my moment uh, on the element. Okay, now that we've explained uh, the plate forces, we can start to understand the plate stresses. Uh, so we've got three stresses, SX, SY, and SXY. So SX is a direct stress, and uh, what contributes to SX is uh, the in-plane membrane force in the X, and the moment about the x-axis. Uh, SY is also a direct stress, and the in-plane um, membrane Y force, and the moment Y, for, uh, moment y contributes to, to SY. Now SXY is the shear stress on the plate, and uh, the in-plane shear force, and uh, the twisting moment contributes to, to SXY. Um, so that, those are the, um, the stresses in the axes, and these stresses are then used to calculate uh, the principal stresses on the plate and the equivalent stresses on the plate. Now the equivalent stresses are things like uh, von Mises stress and the Tresca stress on the plate. Um, so yeah, these forces are used to calculate uh, the principal and the equivalent stresses. The thing to mention about the stresses is that there's a different value uh, for the top of the plate and the bottom of the plate. Um, so it's similar to how uh, the beam stress works. So if you've got, uh, a, for example, a beam that's bending, um, you have those top fibers of the beam in compression and the bottom fibers of the beam in tension. Uh, so it's similar for a plate. Um, the plate force is always in the center of the element, uh, but the plate stresses are given for the top of the element and the bottom of the element, and usually they'll be different values. And so once SX, SY, and SXY are known, uh, we can then calculate uh, the principal stresses on the plate. Uh, so that's S1 and S2, so this is the, the major principal stress and the minor principal stress. And then these principal stresses are used to calculate the equivalent stresses. Uh, so the two important equivalent stresses are von Mises stress and the Tresca shear stress. So Tresca shear stress is the, the max shear stress, but probably the most important uh, equivalent stress that engineers consider is usually uh, the von Mises stress. So that can be considered uh, like the worst case uh, stress result, which is why engineers look at it so much. Okay, so that finishes our uh, talk on the plate and shell element uh, results and how to understand them. Uh, so we've talked about the plate displacements, the plate forces, and the plate stresses. Um, so I hope you found this content uh, really helpful and really interesting. If you did, uh, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and as always, we hope to see you uh, on the SkySafe platform and using our uh, helpful software. Thanks.